Hi, it's Andrea Strang here in the gallery for a change. Um, we have close to home exhibit. It's up till April 3rd. Please come and visit. Partial proceeds will go to the uh, COVID response um, relief fund and it, it supports all the nonprofits. Uh, but the reason we're together today is that we are talking to uh, our artists slash interior designers. They have interesting um, background um, before they became artists or during they became artists, but they're both extremely talented. So I'm talking about Jan Ware and Christy Gilfriland. So Jen, um, if you didn't know, had a career at Calico Corners, working with clients, uh, picking up fabrics, furnishings, finishes, um, and then she gave it 100% for her art career. Thank God she did. And then Christy is actually still working with, um, with clients, and she's more uh, on the spatial uh, layout and architectural detail for the interiors and finishes. So, so happy. Let's welcome both Jan and Christy. Hey, how are you guys? Good. We should be in the kitchen having a glass of wine I instead know. of these little boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we're just ready. I'm just, this is one hot topic. It's personal to me. I have my pet peeves, so I'm sure I'll share them. Um, but let's start, let's start with Christy. So, um, you know, where do you begin when you're dealing with clients and art? Like, do you think you should go and, and choose the art for them? Like, what's your thoughts on that? So my thoughts really are that art is such a personal thing, and that's really important. I think when people are buying art, they should buy something that speaks to them. And whether it's the colors, the movement, the textures, or what the image is, is it something that reminds you of somewhere you've been? Is it a commission piece that is a painting of you know a home, a place where you're married, your pet, or something? But you really should find something that means something to you because part of what art does to the room, I think, is create that personal touch and that personality to the space that's unique to each person. So it, right. bum it bums me out sometimes when I, you know, I'm at not, not one of those designers that would say, I'm going to pick a painting because this is the right color palette. I think it should, it's an opportunity to say a lot more in the space. Yeah. And so it really is something that you should see that, that really moves you and that right. you want to sit and look at. I agree. Jan, do you agree? 100%. It's so much more fun to work with a client that has a strong connection to their art, because then you can help them place it to show it in its best light. And then their interior is a true reflection of them and not just something they pointed and clicked out of a magazine. It's, it's true interior design. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's what we're about here at the gallery because it's like, um, you know, I can't choose it. You, you, it's a quiet space for you to view the art, but also just give yourself an opportunity to, to connect with it. So, I mean, I'm all for that. So let's talk about, um, mixing styles. I mean, with regard to art, um, Christy, do you feel like that? That's a no, no. A yes. Yes. What, what are you thinking? I think it's a great idea and I think it actually it enriches each piece because when you put a few different styles together I think it makes you view you know the images differently each one because it actually will bring out colors or, or elements in them and I think it just makes a wall so much more lively and interesting if it is actually a combination of different styles. Yeah, so I have a picture of um, one of your pieces, Christy. Well, that right there where we're looking is mine with uh, Jan's cupcakes, her original cupcakes. Do you remember them, Jan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just added a Sue Ciccone. But this one is Christy. It's over the fireplace, which I would think is very traditional. But then on the side wall, I have a, a Monique Sarkeesian, which is huge. You'll see it right there. So that's the wall walking into the same room. 
So like, Jen, do you think I'm doing it the right way? Because Absolutely. it's like totally different ends. <laughs> Absolutely. I think a mix of styles is so much more interesting than just having one style of furniture, one style of artwork, all the same. It's, it's boring. It, you, your eye is not interested because it just looks, I don't know, out of a box. I like a mix. I like a mix of style and design. I even like a mix of a modern frame and mm -hmm. a traditional painting or a traditional painting in a modern frame. I like it mixed up. Yeah, no, I agree. And I feel like when um, you pick the art, you're gonna be drawn to different colors. So you curate it in any way, you know, like, you know, as far mm -hmm. as like you're making sense in your room, like you're drawn to the same colors, maybe in upholstery and stuff. But again, it's like you're, you, organically go and choose a uh, a color palette, whether right. it be painting or, or your sofa and stuff. So again, I guess the big takeaway is that you should choose the art and not have a designer, you know, look, have you look through a catalog and, and pick from there. Exactly. Um, so that's my biggest thing. The other thing I feel is very daunting and maybe you have insight, um, Christy, if you have um, like a gallery wall, like I want to do a gallery wall, but I'm I'm realizing that I have to sandbag a few pieces, like for me to start it. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think they should start out with collecting a few that you like. And I think one of the great things too is having someone like yourself as a resource so that you can help people maybe pull some different artists styles and, and images together to start that wall. Um, and then, you know, have fun with it. And sometimes it takes a little time to find all the pieces, but you can build on them and start smaller and, you know, add more as you go and right. make it a fun project. Yeah. So I know, Jen, you actually design and paint with gallery walls in mind. I think we have, though. Well, that is one of your clients who had you do all the dog portraits. Right. You know, that is a perfect wall, perfect frames, perfect subjects. I mean, was that fun doing it, working with a client for Absolutely. that? Absolutely, and that's just an example of what you can do with a tiny little sliver of wall. Now this little sliver of wall that you would have never ever noticed it is yeah. something that you stop and, and pause and take a look at because she's collected all of her dog portraits in that one neat little spot. Yeah, it's like it has the wow factor. Yeah. Love that. And then here's your work too. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you actually thought to yourself, I'm going to do, I think they're little uh, abstracts, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, those are little oil pastels. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's a great idea. So you framed with, with the gallery wall in mind, which I think is great. With those small pieces, yeah. Oh, and that, that I love that picture because... Again, that's your work. I love your work, but I get a lot of times, I think clients uh, like back themselves into a corner and they come in desperate for one big painting above their sofa. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, that's when I bring in you two to do a commission or, um, you know, I, I show them what I have, but that's another option I talk about is, is doing a collection or a gallery wall like that. And I think that's, that's a really cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. I love that. So to Andrea, to add, add onto that, there's so many of the new homes that are built with these, you know, two story spaces that are really hard for people to decorate. And so I think being able to do a gallery wall that really does cover a large span of space is a great way to help solve those problem areas. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking behind you. I know that's your art and you're in your studio, but yeah. I love the way yeah, you just I, bring the pieces well, there. Gallery wall. <laughs> <laughs> All done for yeah. you. <laughs> no, I yeah. love that. I think that's great. And it's great advice because I feel like a lot of times, again, people just back themselves into a space. Do you know why? Because they don't choose the art first, mm -hmm. which I know you both think that's the, that's what you should do when mm -hmm. you're designing. I can see you moving houses and working with what you have, but if you're building something, you know, 
they don't think of, oh my gosh, I could put a piece of art here. Like, do you find that? I mean, I guess, Christy, you're dealing a lot with spaces that are brand new. Yeah. So do yeah. you say, you know what, this would be a great, yeah. maybe we do an art light and then Absolutely. do you suggest that? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. and, and I talk about that a lot with clients as I'm like, we're laying out their design because it's like, okay, we've created this like nook at the end of the hallway where you could add lighting, add an artwork, and it becomes focal point, you know, for something to see as you're entering this, this space. And, you know, I often will see walls and I will say, this is an ideal wall for a big piece of art or, you know, a collage of paintings or something and try to help them get that idea in their mind in the beginning. And, yeah. and adding walls too. I think, you know, some, so many of their, uh, the homes are so open right now that there's, it's hard to find wall space. Walls, and, right. and it's, yeah. And it's so important because that's what we make decorate and make it feel like our home and cozy. Mm -hmm. So I often will try to actually make sure that I do add those little chunks of wall while still keeping the space open, but to give the opportunity to do things like that. Yeah. So Jen, you actually, I know you, you've been in the gallery 222 clients, like talk about your experience. I know there's a gal right down the street that you yeah. did a lot of work with and you actually, you know, suggested other artists to hang, because she actually had a very long wall. A very long wall, kind of with two seating areas within this large living room. And she had she had purchased one of my larger pieces and had a place for it, but then had probably another, you know, 20 feet of wall left yeah. to do something with. So I helped her kind of create a, a, a gallery wall, but with some lar larger pieces and a couple of medium sized pieces too. Yeah, no, and I saw the result and it was amazing. And like Christy's saying, you're saying it actually, it's, to me, it's, it's everything. You know, a, a sofa is a sofa, a table is a chair, but you know, but, but your art is, is everything. And I don't know why people think of it, uh, you know, last minute. Right. So now dark spaces. Um, I know you had a client uh, bought and painting through us, Christy where um, if we can show that picture, it actually is over a fireplace. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like you hung a window on top of the fireplace. Like it illuminates so yeah. much I, and, and it needed it. So tell me about that experience. Yeah, so this woman, um, she she said, she's like, you know, I, this fireplace is actually at the end of a dark hallway and then you see into this room. So it, it, it's, it's sensed from the kitchen where she always is, how dark it was. And mm -hmm. she had another painting over it for a while and it was very dark and it was beautiful, but it just like, it was, it was a dark hole. So mm -hmm. she purchased this painting and I took it over to her house to try it out. And immediately she was in love with it because it, it, it brightened everything up. And yeah. as she, she said to me, it's like a window and yeah. you can really appreciate that. I think, cause it's flanked from the windows on either side, how, how mm -hmm. much light it brings in. And so it really transformed the look for her when she looks down that hallway into that, that, you know, family room with the fireplace. Right. So, yeah, like, it, how, yeah. How can you not yeah. smile and think, right. oh, right. I mean, it could and, be pouring cold rain and you could look at that and right. be like, oh, my God, this, I love this. I'm in a good yeah. mood. And I think it's important to add too, like if you have a room with dark colored walls, it can do the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. that it's doing here with just with this wood fireplace, because the yes. contrast can really brighten things up. Yes. Oh, I believe it. And now even here, I think uh, we have a picture of uh yes that's it so it's elise phillips is in the middle and then uh jen where is her two pieces are flanking it and this is a great example of actually mixing styles because you know jen you can add, yeah you're a little more looser and different from elise but yet there is an example of that i feel her painting is uh illuminating also and being flanked by your pieces is just it, gorgeous like that to me is well i hung it that way so i'm taking a look around <laughs> but i feel like that should just go into someone's home i just love that so jen do you i love your pieces i mean 
Did you ever think you would, you would uh, go so well with Elisa's style? Elisa's work is outstanding. I'm honored to be hung next to Elisa's work. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. I just love it. I just think that's amazing. So then let's talk about the forgotten rooms in our homes that could use some art, but no one ever thinks of it. So Jen, how about kitchens? Have you hung uh, art in kitchens? Absolutely. In my own home, I've had some of my, the, I'm going to say the biggest, most expensive pieces I've ever purchased in my kitchen, because where do I live half the time? In my right. kitchen and bathrooms too. Uh, yeah. Bathroom rooms could become little mini art galleries. I mean, why not? You go in there a lot as well. So yeah, no. kitchens and, and bathrooms. And I know. Yeah. look at that. I love that's your piece. I love that piece. Oh God. And that's one of our that's clients. Fun. I love that. <laughs> and that's her kitchen. That's so cool. I just I personally have a painting um over a hood of my oven and it's um it's it's it really brightens my day i just love it and now bathrooms christy do you uh are you for bathrooms well, oh absolutely <laughs> I, I added a couple recently to my own and i mean I, it, it's so fun because you might be sitting or hanging out in there for a little bit and you have something wonderful to look at like yeah. don't forget about those places i know I know. And I feel I've always said this, you know, paintings is like a, a song that throws you back or a smell. I mean, I just feel like um, it, it transports you uh, and people some people don't know the power of of art. Mm -hmm. So now um, when Jen, here's a question. When do you feel like you need to bring in a designer? When is it necessary? I think it's a good idea to bring a designer in when if it's maybe you're redone a room or you're in a new house and you're bringing artwork from old house to new house. It'd be a good idea to get help with placing the art. Uh, Christy and, and I both echoed a sentiment that we feel one of our pet peeves is art hung too high. So uh, getting a designer to help you place art at the proper height would be a good time to bring in a designer or when you're doing a gallery wall as well. Yeah. Yes. And then with Christy, do you, do you deal with lighting a lot? Of, of course you do. Do you say, Oh, you need a spotlight here. You need a, uh, an art uh, light here. Like, do you deal with that? Yes. And I mean, ideally if it's a new construction or a renovation project, which is what I'm usually working on, I try to identify those walls and areas right then so we can put wall washers up that are going to really light the space up. Um, of course, you can do at, you know lighting afterwards as well. But if you have mm -hmm. the opportunity to get it in the ceiling and really make it highlighted walls, it's, it's excellent to be able to do that. Right. I just did it um, here and I it's not that big of a deal. You call an electrician. Um, I had a couple random like hi hats. So uh, it was the, the wall that Monique Sarkeesian's, um, mm -hmm. and I just needed to put a little shine where it would just drip, the light would just drip. So I called an electrician, they came and they put hi-hats, but the eyeball hi-hats. Mm -hmm. So it just softly uh, drips down, the light just drips down the painting. And yep. it wasn't a big deal. Like I feel some, sometimes it's daunting for people to be like, well, who do I call? Do I have to go, you know? And it's it, it was it was a no brainer, and it wasn't that expensive, you know, to do. It was a couple couple lights, and it really did the trick. Mm -hmm. um, so now with spring coming, I mean, it's it's actually going to be a gorgeous weekend here on the East Coast. So um, let's talk spring cleaning, Jen. What is your advice for um, your art spring cleaning? So this is for a weekend where it's not very good weather. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so that's true. Get, get out this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Take, <laughs> take down all your artwork. And maybe you just want to do it by floor. Take down every all the artwork on the first floor. Dust the walls. Dust the artwork. And then think about moving what you had into the foyer, in the bathroom, what you had in the kitchen done in a grouping with what you had in the living room. Just move it around. And just by moving it around and putting it in a new place, 
you'll see it again. You'll see it again and you'll remember why you collected it in the first place. It makes such a difference. It really does. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So Chuck Daly is weighing in. He said, we're all invited to decorate his house. So <laughs> hey. I, I, and Louise, that's so sweet. I think they have a lot of uh, both of your work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I love it. And um, I'm trying to think. We I think we covered everything. Do you guys have anything to add? I mean, I, I, I think I want to add a little bit to um, Jen's spring clean yes. because I do think too, when you move it around, at least like at my house, my husband will be like, Oh, is that a new painting? And it's like, <laughs> no, but because it's in a different spot, it's like suddenly a new, a new thing. So I think mm -hmm. that that's kind of a fun way. If you move things around to, you know, without having to go buy anything new, you can still like create some newness or yes. and maybe you, find something to add to it or with it in a new location, but it can really change yeah. things around. I think that's great. I love it. I think that's all great advice. So I hate to leave you guys, but I just want to thank you for all your thoughts and your efforts and your talent. You're so talented in, in so many ways. So I appreciate you spending uh, time with us. Thanks, Andrea. Thank all you. All right, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. So our next table talk will be with the plein air artists that are part of the close to home show. Uh, so tune in. It's going to be the same time and on Thursday of next week. So April 1st, Thursday, we're going to be talking with Jacqueline Beam, Elaine Lyle and Valerie Craig. And we're going to discuss the plein air movement and what's happening um, in that world. And then the close to home is up till April 3rd, come visit. We are open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to five, but we are online 24 seven. So we're open online 24 seven. So check out the exhibit and it goes to a good cause. So thank you so much for spending your time with us.